welcome to this next video in the series for PCBs. Here we're going to be looking at electronic goods and the reliability testing. Let's start with reliability and durability. New product development is a complex process and takes time and a key step in the process is testing your product for reliability and durability. The main reason for reliability testing is to find out what the performance is over a long period of time. Reliability test results may be categorized using the bathtub curve shown on the right here. The bathtub curve shows the decreasing failure rate during the early infant mortality days of the product, leading to the normal life of the product population, and finally the onset of the end of life wear out. You can see here the decreasing failure rate section, the constant failure rate, and the increasing failure rate. The blue curve is the bathtub shape. Let's switch over to temperature and humidity. Temperature and humidity testing determines how a system behaves in extreme conditions where the product is operated in high and low temperatures as well as cycling the temperature between high and low. Among other things, temperature and humidity test studies the effects of climate changes on electronic components such as failures due to parameter shifts, mechanical failures due to rapid water or frost formation, optical failures as in fogging, water tightness in packaging and looking at the failures, and material degradation or epoxy coatings etc and much more. The table on the right here shows an example of shipping environmental testing where it goes from step 1 to 5 and the humidity and temperature starts at low raising to high and then back down to low again. On the right hand side it shows the duration for each of these tests. RH just stands for relative humidity. Vibration testing. The applications of vibration testing form a major part of quality assurance for everything from printed circuit boards to completed products. With specifically designed equipment such as mechanical, electro-hydraulic and electromagnetic shakers, test samples are typically subjected to varying degrees of controlled vibration stresses. Products are vibration tested to determine limits and tolerances. Every product is vulnerable to vibration loads and potential breakage or failure. You can see here a typical vibration test machine. Mechanical shock testing. The ability to withstand mechanical shock is both a key design consideration and an important selling point for certain types of consumer goods. For this reason, a dynamic mechanical analysis is a required component of quality control and product testing. A shock test will measure the impact of sudden acceleration or deacceleration using precise tools such as strain gauges, load cells and piezo sensors. Here we can see a mechanical shock testing equipment and the setup. Now I want to talk about the highly exaggerated life test or the HALT process. HALT is applied to the initial product testing stages prior to production and its primary objective is to highlight failure modes and weaknesses in the design so the design can be modified and improved to eliminate any weaknesses found. In HALT, temperature and vibration stress conditions are used during product development to find weak spots in the product design and its planned fabrication processes. Other test stimuli may include humidity, thermal cycling, burn-in for a specified period of time, overvoltage, voltage cycling and anything else that could logically expose defects. This test requires only a few units and a short testing period to identify the fundamental limits of the technology being used. Generally, every weak point must be identified and fixed or redesigned if it does not meet the product's specified limits. This is a typical flow process for the whole process. We can see it at the top here we've got the start, 
we then drop down into the first test cycle. Here we're looking at temperature operation limits with voltage limits. We can see then if we've got the decision point, failure occurs or not. If it does not occur, then it just drops into the next test cycle. And here we've got the thermal cycle. And again, the decision point there, if it does not fail, it completes the cycle with a vibration test. If, however, at any point during these tests, the failure does occur, then you can see it drops down to the bottom, needing the requirement to analyze what that root cause was, then moving into manufacturing process improvements, improvements from the design features, improved component choice, etc., and then coming back through that complete cycle until everything has passed this process. Next, let's have a look at the highly exaggerated stress screening, or HAS. HAS is implemented at the production stage, where the production samples are subjected to stress testing beyond the product specification limits, but not up to the extreme levels used in the HALT test. The objective of HAS is to ensure products from production meet the life expectancy without showing any signs of failure modes. Early production failures on a new product are often attributed to variability within the manufacturing process. Therefore, identifying these potential production failure modes as early as possible is paramount to the success of a product launch. And this is where HAS comes into play. A random set of production items will be selected for the production line and then placed under different stress tests that can highlight production faults that are not only obvious, but will also identify any of the latent faults that are not detectable in normal production testing. This reliability screening allows potential faults to be identified that are normally associated with early production failure in the field. This provides the engineering team to work on corrective actions and process improvements, thus creating a more robust and reliable product that would otherwise lead to potential product failures for the customer. In summary, this process is ideally suited to all electronic and electromechanical assemblies so that a more reliable and robust product can be released into the marketplace. Let's have a look at a quick graph for HAS. On the extreme ends of the graph, we have the lower and upper destruction limits. The next set of limits in are the lower operational and the upper operational limits. In the center here, we have the HAS section and the production specification limits. We can see that the manufacturing defects removed by the HAS testing highlighted in red. This is the objective of the HAS testing to remove these poor products. Let's have a look at the HALT and the HAS summary with a timeline. Or we can see in the table across the top we have the typical test profile for both HALT and HAS. The defects being addressed, development phase being applied and the stress levels. From a timing point of view across the bottom, the HALT test is clearly shown in the design phase, whereas the HAS test is highlighted at the end of the manufacturing phase. The importance of product reliability. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. So making sure your products are reliable before you bring them to market can prevent problems that can doom your business. Understanding some of the basic benefits of reliability testing will help you make sure you're ready to sell with minimal problems from day one. Making sure your product is reliable can also help you spot design and production flaws that can cause failure and potential injuries to users. Just one successful lawsuit can put you out of business. Remember, put reliability first. Don't forget to check out our other videos in this series and you can contact us if you need any help with your projects at all in China. 
don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. For more information, you can always visit our website and go to the solutions page. Thanks for listening. My name is Paul Adams from Southeast and I shall see you in the next video. Oh, <music>